Hey team, what I have for you today is how to make an emergency, extreme cold weather survival shelter. Coming up. Perform some basic emergency distress signals. Team, I know that everybody tells you that you need to carry an emergency survival blanket in your kit when you're out working through the wilderness. And that's a true statement, but by itself, all it's really gonna do is make you hate life. Now, maybe you're driving down the road at night, you can get isolated. Maybe you're hiking through the hills and weather turns for worse. Maybe all you have is that emergency shelter and a poncho. Can we take the two together to make a shelter system that will help maintain our core body temperature and keep us from dying from exposure? I'm moving out today. The temperature is about 22 degrees. It's cold enough to kill people. Team and statistics will tell us that every single year, over 1,300 Americans will die from exposure. This is something that we have to be prepared for in the case of a worst case scenario. You can't risk your life by not being prepared. If not now, when? Now while you're moving along, before you lose your daylight, you need to stop. You need to assess the risks and the hazards of continuing to move on. Try to find a place that has a little bit of shelter because underneath the trees is gonna provide an average of five degree warmer temperature than the surrounding area. In this case, I'm gonna find a couple trees that I can use to help make a modified lean-to. Once I find those trees, I'm gonna set off and search for some material that I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need two cross beams. First one happens to be right at hand. I'm gonna use a square lashing to get it connected to both uprights. From here, I'm gonna look around and I'm gonna find my other cross beam. In this case, I, I see a nice tall standing tree. I think I'm gonna be able to get multiple sections out of. Because in addition to two cross beams, I'm gonna need two rafters. So I'm gonna get this cut using a Baco Laplander saw that I carried with me. Getting this thing cut down, I'm gonna take the time to go ahead and delimit because those limbs are gonna help provide a foundation for the bed that I'm gonna sleep on. Cut my two rafters, get them put into place. And then I can set my final ridge across those two rafters. And this creates a, a space which is gonna be important in order to be able to facilitate a small survival fire inside the shelter. From here we can go ahead and get that poncho set up. Just gonna use some basic knots to secure it to that top ridge line and then stick it down to the ground behind our bows.
And by itself, the lean-to shelter may help keep you alive. And although I might look sexy af underneath it, it's not really gonna do enough other than give me a bad night. Once I have that in place, I can go ahead and grab that emergency blanket, get it spread out, and begin to prepare it to tie to the bottom ridge line. Now, these emergency survival blankets, they don't have any grommets, so we need to, to think on our feet and be able to improvise, adapt, and overcome. In this case, I'm just gonna take some small twigs and I'm gonna cut off the ends and make sure that they're nice and rounded so that they won't protrude and tear apart this emergency blanket. And then I'm gonna use my hatchet to make some stakes to secure it down into the ground. Once we have our shelter put into place, now we can go ahead and build a small fire to, to, to begin to warm up the ambient temperature inside the hooch. Now you can see how this is starting to, to come together. Have the emergency blanket secured to the bottom ridge line, have the poncho secured to the top ridge line. That gap is going to enable airflow to escape, which is going to be paramount in order to be able to facilitate a small cooking fire inside. All right now we got this shelter built up. We're going to go and get a fire started, get nice and toasty, make up some soup. Cut a little carrot, jalapeno. Got to have a little bit. Right, and as this fire gets going, we'll go collect some more wood because we're gonna we're gonna need some more for the night. In addition, we also need to know and understand how to form some basic emergency distress signals. Two, and some might say three basic types. You have audible, you have visual, and then that third one that kind of fuses in between both of them is gonna be electronic. Now out in the woods during the daytime, the number one signal that we can use at our disposal is gonna be a fire. Burning green, brush and getting a good plume of smoke up off into the air is going to be seen for miles. Also at our disposal are using things like signal mirrors which are great when you have some sunlight but we need to have some depth and breadth in our emergency survival plan so we need to plan on some additional things. Maybe it's using a panel. If we're going to use some sort of a panel whether it's a V17 panel or even that emergency survival blanket we want to try to ensure that we're out in as much of an open area and space as we can possibly find so that it's easier to find us. Other visual symbols that we can use is going to be uh, to coordinate an X. We can do this by, by using some branches or material or rocks. We can form arrows in the direction that we've been traveling. We can also use a simple chem light, which is extremely beneficial at night by cracking it open and just twirling it around, making the beloved buzzsaw. On top of having some visual signals, we also have audible symbols, and the magic rule of three applies to all of them. 
could be three gunshots, three whistle blasts, three honkings of your horn. Now, whistles have been tried and true in both civilian as well as in the military to be able to alert others and to direct action. And a whistle can be heard from great distances. On top of all of these, we also have the options of, of, of again, going back to some electronic means. Whether it's using a ham radio, whether it's using a satellite or GPS, and some of the more modern day features enable you to send a distress call, an SOS signal from your location to somebody who might be tracking where you are. And team, on that note, I can't tell you how important it is to ensure that somebody back home knows where you're going, how to get there, what time you should return, and who they should call when they don't hear from you. Every single year, thousands of search and rescue operations are conducted to recover the injured, the wounded, and the lost. All right, team, let me know what you think down in the comments below about what you think about the video and the shelter setup. We'll continue to keep this conversation rolling. As always, I appreciate all you guys, man. You stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked.